Hey, what's up guys? This is my review for the BlackBerry Priv. So let's talk about the call quality and the speaker quality on this device. So the front facing speaker is a sound bar, quite similar to what you see in modern home theater speakers. Um, the call quality was very clear, uh, quite audible. Uh, the loudspeaker was very loud as well. Watching movies, playing videos online, and gaming was quite a pleasurable experience using this phone. The display on this device is a beautiful 5.4 inch AMOLED display. It gets super bright. It's not as bright as an LCD display, but it's bright enough. The colors look really nice on it. It's nice and vibrant. If you're wondering what are the pixels or the dimensions for this display, uh, what we're looking at is 2560 by 1440, which spits out about 540 PPIs or pixels per inch. Um, the color reproductions look brilliant. It's nice and vibrant. And then you could also go into the settings of this device and you could also do some color adjustments to this display and then you could adjust the white balance or you could adjust the saturation of the display as you please. Now the display also allows you to do some really cool things like you could push in from the side here or use the productivity edge to do some really cool things such as adjust your calendar interact with your hub, you know, open task, play around with your contacts. Now the one issue that I had with this display is right around this corner, once the device is open, you can actually see on the screen, look at that, how it bounces up and down. You can see that movement. Look, let's look right in this region right here. When you press on that display, it sort of goes in and out of the device. And the reason I mentioned this is because your finger is going to be touching this multitask button. And every time you press it, you sort of feel the vibration, but you also feel the display go in. Beyond these little issues, the design on this phone is exceptionally beautiful. It's elegant. It's quite unique. I love the design of this phone. Um, for a slider, it's super, super, super thin. Look how thin that is. You would think this device is thick for being a slider and it looks thick on cameras, but it's actually ridiculously thin how thin this is I could easily type with this device and it's super wide as well with one hand look at that I could reach the queue easily just to type on so the design of this is well it's a well-built phone but it's not a hundred percent solid secondly um, it has a curved display so you could do some pretty cool things with that and I'll talk about that in the software part and it also has this back door material made out of woven glass. And as you can see, it looks pretty oily and greasy and I purposely did not wipe it off. And the reason for that is this has an oleophobic resin which absorbs oil from your fingertips so it doesn't get on the actual display. Now in terms of Android, what we are looking at here is Android Lollipop and it's the newest version of Android Lollipop, Android 5.1.1. Blackberry did say that they're gonna be coming out with a new version of Android, Android Marshmallow in early 2016. But beyond that, um, Android Lollipop, let's talk about this and let me defend BlackBerry for launching with this device. So Lollipop is pretty good. It's not a bad OS. It has all of the really cool features and I think Lollipop is awesome. However, when you look at the majority of Android devices out there, most of them are Android KitKat, which is from 2012, 2013. And this is Android Lollipop, which is pretty recent, 2014. So it's not, the, it's not a handicapped device by no means. Secondly, they promise they're going to update it to Marshmallow, so that's going to be fine. You're not going to have any issues. You're going to get even more battery life out of it when you get to Marshmallow. Um, now, Android Lollipop allows you, with the BlackBerry launcher, to do some pretty cool things, like swipe in from the right to reveal the productivity edge. And in terms of benchmark scores, I saw approximately 1,200 uh, points for the single core and 3,500 for the multi-core score. And in terms of and 22 benchmark, you're getting 48,000. Now these numbers means absolutely nothing in the real world because chances are you're not gonna be using your device that heavily. But it's a pretty good score. It's not the highest scoring that I've ever seen for devices of this caliber, but it's a pretty good score. Beyond that, there are bugs with the launcher that BlackBerry has, you know, moving from left to right, it just seems slower. Opening up some apps, there's just this Android lag that I haven't seen for years and I think with a software update or two BlackBerry could simply eliminate all of these bugs that exist. Thirdly, um, in terms of bugs while we're on it, the keyboard is super buggy. 
sometimes it doesn't even recognize what you pressed. There is a lag on this device and I'm not gonna hide it and not tell you guys about it. So it is laggy. Secondly, sometimes to use the fine cursor tools it works, sometimes it doesn't. But when it does work, it's awesome. It's the best thing ever. You know, you can move the fine cursor tool to get to put the cursor in a certain place. You could swipe from right to left to delete words as you type. Also, you could move up and down on web pages and apps for scrolling. So it's it's pretty good that they have this awesome keyboard that doubles as a trackpad. And I that's the only reason that I've been using this keyboard for, as a trackpad and nothing more. Now, in terms of software, BlackBerry has added some pretty cool things to their software side as well. You could create something called a genie widget. And what a genie widget is, is the moment you rub on one of these either up or down or on any app with these three little logo, with these three little dots beneath them, you sort of bring up these pop-up widgets and that's how the pop-up or the genie widget works. I call it genie widget. If you guys use the name genie widget, I know you got it from my video, but anyways, so these genie widgets are pretty cool. It's available on all apps, so you could just swipe up and boom, there you go. They also brought with them the BlackBerry Hub, which, you know, is a unified inbox for all of your emails text messages, social media, Facebook, pretty much anything that you want. It all is inside of the hub. They have even brought in their picture unlock to unlock the device, which works phenomenal. Everything about this device is pretty awesome so far. There are bugs that exist and they will be fixed with software updates. It's software bugs. Now, in terms of battery life, what you're looking at here is 3,410 milliampere hour battery life. It does support Qi wireless charging and it also supports uh, Snapdragon quick charging 2.0 technology on it. So how is the battery life on this device? So I was able to get between 15 and 16 hours a day easily. So I would go out, come back home, and I still have about 20 or 30% battery life remaining. So easily you could get about a full day of usage from this device. In terms of on screen on time or real time uh, display use, I was able to get between three hours and 40 minutes to four hours and 15 minutes. And that's without doing any sort of dimming of the screen or going into low power mode. Now in terms of camera technology, what we're looking at here is there are two cameras on this device, a two megapixel at the front that's ultra wide and an 18 megapixel Schneider cruise neck camera said it's and nailed it in that one time awesome I should get a thumbs up for that anyways so how does these cameras actually work the front camera it's crap it's not great at all if you're if you're looking for a selfie camera look somewhere else there are a lot other better selfie cameras on the market but it does a pretty okay job and what I mean by that is it's not sharp it's not crazy it's just good enough just to do video or Skyping. The problem that I had with the front camera, uh, particularly, it's uh, there's no dynamic range. It blows out in daylight um, with background brightness. Um, it's not sharp at all. The color reproduction isn't that great. In the nighttime, it gets super grainy, and that's normal for any camera, but it's getting really bad on this, this device because this, once you take the picture, it's a two megapixel picture, and you're putting that on a display that's a quad HD, which is super high resolution, so it's gonna look a lot worse on a super high res display. So the front facing camera, uh-uh, it's not that good. It's, uh, you know. Now the rear facing camera is where all the money and the gold is at. It's, it's good. It's the best rear facing camera on a BlackBerry to date. However, um, in terms of it actually being the best on the market, it's not. It's 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 just above average. Uh, the LG V10, the Samsung S6, Note 5. You know they all have better cameras than this, and they all take uh, better picture quality. So the problem with the camera is when you take the photo, there's something called shutter lag, and there's something called processing lag. Usually on most devices you see either shutter lag or processing lag. With the Perf, you're fortunate because you have both of them. So you have the shutter lag. So once you take that photo, you gotta hold your hand really steady because it takes almost a second to two seconds to get that picture to save and to make sure and actually capture that image. So there is shutter lag and then there's also processing lag. Now the image quality that you get from these devices, I think it's super clean. This, this Schneider cruise neck thing, 
that's tuned the camera. It works really well. It's not a bad quality image. But what I've noticed is many of the images are sort of flat um, with some depth. It doesn't have dynamic range. Uh, you know, in low light, it does a pretty good job. But it also has a lot of, it blows out the details in the highlights. The highlights are really bad. Um, in low light situations, if you go from a really well lit situation to a really dark lit situation, you sort of lose image quality on this device. The images are still usable with, a, you know, put on a filter or something like that. So the picture quality is sharp, it reproduces color accurately, it, it's vibrant, um, it doesn't overcompensate or oversaturate for things that are missing. It does a good job. It does a really good job for the rear-facing camera. The best job that I've ever seen BlackBerry done, ever. Now, for every 20 images that you take with the phone, um, what I've noticed is five of those images have a problem. The problem that I see with many of these images is right around where you're focusing, um, it sort of gets this sort of grainy, high noise uh, situation where the picture isn't sort of uniform. The image signaling processor or the processing that the image gets, it's like BlackBerry's trying to fake a bokeh or a blurry effect. And what that, what that actually happens is you get this sort of gray gritty parts of in, in the image that doesn't look too attractive and you only notice that in bright daylight so let's say you're taking a landscape shot you would notice it in certain regions of the image you would see that patchiness in the image and that's because of the processing that the image gets now this phone does take 4k video but what I want to let you guys know is the 4k video is really odd um, the focusing speed is it's fast enough um, I've seen faster out there um, but secondly the thing about the video is so if your hand is super steady you'll notice that the 4k video it's fine it's clean it has depth to it um, it's not the best 4k video I've seen better 4k video out there and this 4K video reminds me of when 4K was now coming to uh, smartphones, like the Samsung Galaxy uh, phone, when that now began shooting 4K video. It wasn't the best, but it was good enough. Um, let me also comment on saying, the moment you start to move with the video or the phone in your hand, you sort of get this wavy, jiggly pattern. And in the background, you would notice like it goes vertically, and in the foreground, it goes up and down, and that's the optical image stabilization at work it does have optical image stabilization on this for the 4k video but what happens is it sort of just totally messes up that that clean image and then you just sort of get artifacting and you sort of lose the detail and crumpling so i'm not sure if it's the bit rate that needs to be fixed with the blackberry software or if it's just the actual phone or the sensor itself and that usually I've seen the Oppo 7 uh, have this problem and it was never fixed going forth. So let's speak about the pricing of this device. So if you're looking at this device, chances are you either have the money to get the phone and I would recommend you get the phone. I highly recommend you buy this phone. It's a very good phone. If you're coming from BlackBerry, you're a BlackBerry fanboy um, and you just want to get those apps, this is the phone for you. You're not gonna have any sort of issues BlackBerry works tirelessly and diligently to work out and smash bugs in their head. And I promise you that this phone is gonna get that same exact BlackBerry treatment. Now, if you're looking for something a little more and you don't really care about the security aspect, this might not be the phone for you. There's a lot better phones out there for you. But I like this phone personally. I have no problem going on a two-year contract with this phone. In fact, it was already brimming with life for billions of years.